Thank you, Bill. I'm grateful for the introduction, and it is really a pleasure to be here with you tonight. I'm grateful for all who have worked so hard to make the charter happen, and I really appreciate the work that has gone into making this representative across the political spectrum. Much has been accomplished. Much has been accomplished, but we have more to do. The reason why this charter is important to me as a black woman, as a woman of faith, is because religious freedom has been so important for African Americans in this country. It has really been the fuel behind some very important developments. The abolition of slavery being one excellent example because it was a great awakening and the theological ideas that arose out of the great awakening that really convinced Americans that slavery was an enormous sin. That convinced Americans that it wasn't just a sin, but it was a sin that needed to be repented for immediately so that the abolitionists called for the immediate end of slavery. And it was an exercise of religious freedom that they were engaged in. But John DiUlio, at a similar event for the American Charter, talked about the fact that religion is both a tonic and a toxin. Because religious freedom is exercised by slaveholders is what fueled, to some extent, the slavery that the abolitionists fought against. So we need to be open-eyed as we advocate for religious freedom. We have to recognize that it is so important for the voices of the oppressed to be heard. The other place where I really want to turn our attention to the importance of religious freedom in the lives of African Americans is the civil rights movement. That transformational movement, which not just changed the whole nation, but had global impact. It was a commitment to faith that gave a man like Martin Luther King Jr. the strength to stand against the terror that reigned in the Jim Crow South, that brought thousands of black people out to face down water hoses and police dogs and policemen with batons. It was faith that God had called them to do this. It was faith that God intended for them something better than the life that they were leading under a racist, in a racist South. In the same way today, religious freedom is so important in the black church, in poor black neighborhoods. But it's not just people of faith, because even if you look at the, relig if you look at the civil rights movement, so many people in the civil rights movement were white, were Jewish, were from Protestant churches. So many people were from Catholic churches. What brought them together was the freedom to act on their conscience. You didn't have to be a person of faith. There were atheists. There were people of no faith at all. There were Buddhists involved in the civil rights movement. It's a freedom to act on conscience. And that's why this charter is written not just about religious freedom, but it's also written about conscience. Because what we are saying is that integral to the human being, to our dignity, is the right to act on our conscience, to express our deepest beliefs. And today that kind of conscience works in the black community, in black churches, where we work among the poorest in the nation, where black churches do more in terms of their size and their budget than their brother and sister churches, and churches which have far more wealth. In fact, a recent study that looked at a represent, nationally representative sample of black churches across seven denominations found that 90% of black churches provide youth services for their neighborhoods. 75% or more provide either cash assistance, voter registration, or a food pantry and at least 50% offer counseling. The power of religious freedom at work. And so I am signing this charter tonight because I want to send the message 
that freedom of religion and freedom of conscience is not discrimination, as has been suggested in some quarters. That it is critical for everyone, every human being, and that it has been critical in benefiting African Americans. I want to stand against current developments that have subtly been eroding the importance, the foundational importance of religion, of freedom for religion and conscience in this country. But I want to challenge us to do more. Because this freedom is most vital to those who are oppressed. Our innate sense of justice compels us to reject the presuppositions of those who oppress us. And it is our freedom to act on that innate sense that something is wrong that brings freedom and that maintains the humanity of those who are oppressed. So we need to do more. There, need to be, there needs to be greater diversity in this movement that we're starting. We need to have a stronger voice from the black church. We need to have a wider range of people, not just politically, but also in terms of race. More than that, this is a charter that's important for all people because every individual has the right to personal authenticity. And congruence between our actions, our speech, and our beliefs is an essential aspect of human flourishing. We have the need and the right to engage and express our deepest beliefs and to reveal to others our most genuine selves. That's what we're standing here for, the right to human authenticity. More than that, this right is fundamental to almost every religion because most religions call on our adherents to stand up and testify to the faith that we hold, to live lives that are consistent with the faith that we hold. So we need religious freedom and freedom of conscience that isn't just about what we do in the privacy of our homes, isn't just about what we do in our churches, in our mosques, in our synagogues, but that is about living consistently even in the public square. And just as no one should be coerced to join any religion, in the same way, People should be equally free to live in a way that's consistent with a religion that they find compelling. To, pro <laughs> and to protect the rights of those who will not be compelled, it is essential to protect the rights of those who believe and live consistent with that belief. Finally, it's respect for the freedom to dissent in the public arena that allows all Americans to speak against injustices of all kinds, whether it is against mass incarceration or whether it's against police brutality against black men. It's the right to stand up and to speak according to our conscience. And for all of these reasons, the American Charter of Freedom of Religion and of Conscience is essential and beneficial to all Americans. Thank you.